Status check to proceed with terminal count. Atlas systems, propulsion. Go. Hydraulics. Go. Pneumatic. Go. LO2. Go. Water. Go. Centaur systems, propulsion. Go. Pneumatic. Go. LO2. Go. LH2. Go. As gas. Go. Electrical systems, airborne. Go. Ground. Go. Facility. Go. RFFDF. Go. Flight control. Go. DCQ. Go. Op support. Go. Com. Go. Umbilical. Go. Arm control. Go. ECS. Go. Redline monitor. Go. Quality. Go. Op safety manager. Go. ULA safety officer. Go. Vehicle system engineer. Go. Anomaly chief. Go. Range coordinator. Clear to proceed. Flight director. Light is go. Launch director. LD is go, and LC, you have permission to launch. This, this is a really exciting time, right? Less than five minutes here until launch. So, you know, it's, it's funny when we say we're less than five minutes to launch, but I know that you've been on the program for about eight years now. So all of this, I know, has been leading up to this moment and the CFT. Can you tell us a little bit more about your role within the Starliner program? Uh, I joined the program about, like I said, eight years ago, shortly after the space shuttle program ended, and uh, it's uh, it's been wonderful uh, to be a part of the team. It's been wonderful to have some influence in the design, uh, and now you know it's almost surreal. There it is out on the pad. You know the labor of the last uh, eight and a half years is, is sort of coming to uh, you know it's 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 uh, it's game day, right? The, the big test is, and and mind you, um, you know our big game right for the spacecraft actually begins when the launch vehicle releases us 11 minutes from now. So we've got a lot of work to do, even though this is the exciting part that everybody enjoys watching the launch. Um, our big test really begins when the launch vehicle sort of releases us, and, uh, and we have to go you know, perform all the necessary demonstrations to get ready to dock to the International Space Station tomorrow. So we've got a busy 24 hours. Yeah. Status check. Go Atlas. Go Centaur. Go Starliner. Go Starliner. seconds prior to jettison. B-180 has gone back up to full thrust as expected. Engine response looks good. One minute, 50 seconds in. Atlas is now 17 miles in altitude, 11 and a half miles downrange distance, traveling at 2,300 miles per hour. Now passing two minutes into flight. RD-180 engine operating parameters continue to look good at full thrust. And at two minutes, 11 seconds into flight, the Atlas rocket now weighs just one half of what it did at launch, burning propellant at a rate of 2,800 pounds per second. And we've seen good indication of jettison of both solid rocket boosters. 
Vehicle's gone to closed loop guidance. Now just under two minutes remaining in the booster phase of flight. Two minutes, 35 seconds into flight. RD-180 continues to perform well. Engine's now throttling down slightly. Engine response looks good. And Atlas 5 is now traveling at over five times the speed of sound. Centaur reaction control system is now pressurizing the flight levels. System response looks good. Three minutes, 10 seconds into flight. Atlas 5 is now 38 miles in altitude, 80 miles downrange distance, traveling at 5,800 miles per hour. RD-180 engine operating parameters continue to look good. Now one minute remaining until engine cutoff. Body rate responses continue to look good throughout the booster phase of flight. And RD-180 is now throttling to maintain a constant 3.5G acceleration limit. Engine responses will all look good. Three minutes, 55 seconds into flight. And Centaur has begun the boost phase chill down sequence. 20 seconds to Vico. RD-180 continuing to look good as it throttles to maintain that constant 3.5G acceleration limit. Atlas PU has gone to open loop in preparation for Vico. And standing by for Vico. And we have Vico booster engine cutoff, standing by for stage separation. And we have good indication of stage separation. We have pre-start on the RL-10. Standing by for ignition. We have ignition and full thrust on both RL-10 engines. Chamber pressures look good on both engines. We have confirmation of ascent cover jettison on Starliner. Aeroskirt jettison. And we have good indication of Aeroskirt jettison. Centaur now resuming active attitude control after successful aeroskirt jettison. Chamber pressures on both RL-10 engines continue to look good. This was a very critical piece of the mission here. Staging is always a very dynamic piece of flight. Now passing five minutes, 30 seconds into flight. And the Centaur RCS system is beginning the initial thruster firings for system thermal conditioning. System response looks good. Now once again, Centaur will continue burning for about another five minutes. Now passing six minutes into flight. And Centaur is now 95 miles in altitude, 570 miles downrange distance, traveling at 12,000 miles an hour. Those dual RL-10 engines continue to propel Starliner. They are uh, making up for a little bit of uh, the booster flying a flatter trajectory and at lower thrust, again, to maintain that 3.5 G forces. Again, a first flight for the dual engine Centaur on an Atlas V. Starliner and Centaur continue to head to orbit. Throughout the Centaur burn, chamber pressures have remained very stable. Just under five minutes now remaining in the burn. And Centaur is now 102 miles in altitude, 800 miles downrange distance, traveling at 12,700 miles per hour. Tori and Jim, thank you for the communication today. That was very much appreciated. Um, to the, t I just want to 
make sure I understand this, because um, I haven't actually heard anyone say it definitively, docking and rendezvous with the station is completely off the table for this. Yes? I have a follow-up. Uh, yeah, so we were, we were debating that just maybe an hour ago. Um, and I would say that that's safe to take off the table at this point. Um, I, th I think it's, yeah, it's, it's safe to take off the table at this point. It's, okay. it's, not, worth, it's not worth doing given, given the amount of fuel that we burned. Remember, when, 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 the, um, when, when, uh, when the timing was off, the spacecraft didn't know exactly where it was in the sequence. And when that happened, it believed, it, it seems, and again, this is all very, very early, but it, it seems like it believed that it was doing an orbital insertion burn when it wasn't. And when that happens, the reaction control system starts working because it, it has to have very precise um, kind of station keeping, if you will, very precise attitude keeping. And that very precise attitude keeping burns fuel. And so by the time we, we got that figured out, uh, we had burned sufficient fuel that if we would have done an orbit insertion burn to get to the International Space Station, it might not have been enough. And so the, I think that the right decision was made by the people who were in the room at the time, the right decision was made to protect White Sands, to make sure that we can get this spacecraft safely back to White Sands, which is an important test objective in itself. So I just, I want to be really clear. The, the NASA team and the Boeing team need to be commended for making the decision that is in the best interest of our country, for the, the decision that is in the best interest of the safety of people on the ground and of course our astronauts. I will also say that at no time, even under, under the automated sequence, at no time had we had astronauts on board that were not manually flying it, there was no time at which they would have been unsafe during any of this. And had they been on board, we very well would be on our way, very well could be, I'm not saying we would have been, very well could be on our way to the International Space Station right now.